I want to show you guys how to take your PDM to the next level. So basically how to go from, eh, you know, so-so to just a dope PDM vault that does all kind of cool stuff. A little bit about MLC. Honestly, uh, those of you who are at this webinar have probably heard about us already and are, are somewhat familiar, so I won't spend too much time. But we're, we're a fabulous company. And I, I mean that, because, and I can say that as well, because I've worked for the company and I've also been a customer of, of MLCs uh, for seven years, actually. So a little bit of background on me uh, prior to coming on board with MLC. Uh, I spent about seven years doing actual equipment design, putting this stuff to use, using PDM on a daily basis, uh, all of that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. This is what we're going to be looking at today and what we're going to be covering. We'll start off with looking at Web2, which is just such an underutilized but awesome tool that is pretty simple to get spun up, and it allows you to access your PDM vault from any device with a browser. So pretty sweet. After that, we're going to look at Dispatch, which is going to help us just automate some of the more mundane tasks that we do. Uh, and it can really be customized to suit a very large variety of applications. After that, we'll take a look at some templates where I'll show you guys how you can make like a smart part numbering uh, sort of template and can help you speed things up and standardize. And then we're going to look at ECNs. So ECNs is a big topic. I know a lot of people have processes. Some of them are manual and not inside of their vault. And I want to show one way that you can kind of implement an ECN or an, or an ECO type of process. You know. So I'm going to go ahead and switch into my Google Chrome browser. And right, I'm on a laptop right now, but this could be any device connected to the internet. It could be a cell phone. Um, it could be a Chromebook. It could be just about anything with a, with a web browser that's connected to your network. And you can see how, I mean, <laughs> how exciting of a tool this could be. And just to kind of give a, an example of a use case, Think about this. Think about maybe a field technician who's out working on a piece of equipment, doesn't have access to his laptop, but needs to maybe come in and reference a design uh, to see how something gets assembled. You know, being able to pull that up just directly from their cell phone, I think, is a pretty compelling advantage. It can help folks collaborate really nicely. So just this is just a super tool. It's, it's easy to implement. We can get this set up for you guys in less than a day. Uh, you have full access to like the data cards, bills of material, all from a web browser, no installation required, and it's still just as secure. You know, you still need a login to get into to any of this stuff, but you can use all of your, your standard style PDM functionality. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can even do approvals if you wanted to uh, from the web browsers. You can do change states. Uh, you do have the capability to do checkouts and, and download the, the files if you have that enabled. Um, but it's, I don't want to mislead anyone and let you, and make you think that this is a, a full-fledged you know, vault view. It's not ideal for doing CAD design. It's more of a, a reference type of a uh, tool. But it, it really excels in, in what it's made for, which is referencing uh, this kinds of data. So I just thought I'd, I'd show that right up front uh, just because it's such a useful tool. When it comes to dispatches, and the automation of some of these mundane tasks that I mentioned, we're going to go through. We're going to go through a couple of things here. I'll probably show three dispatches that I've put together. One of them is going to rename some files as whatever their serial number is. So I just flipped into my regular old vault view over here, and you can see that we have some data that's referencing a serial number, and just to kind of give you a little bit of a background on the situation, let's just say that this serial number, this metadata was there, and we've made the decision that we want to rename the files. We want the file name to actually match whatever that drawing number is. Okay, Redoing that in a manual process, if you have a whole bunch of data, is going to be absolutely horrible. That's not going to be a fun task. <laughs> so what I'm going to show you is a way that you can let dispatch automate this for however many of these you want to run in a batch. And it's just going to be as simple as a right click. So I'm just going to right click and say rename these SOLIDWORKS files with serial number. And the dispatch is going to do its thing and let me know when it's finished. 
and boom, there you go. This has been taken care of. So it's just going to pull wherever that number is. And this is configurable for any type of uh, variable that you might have in your card. You know, you can pull it from whatever variable you have and just customize the dispatch action to rename your files for you. So this is just a huge time saver. I mean, it, it could probably also save you from hiring an intern from doing this <laughs> and having them screw it up worse for you. No, I'm just kidding. I can talk about interns because I used to be one. All right, another thing I want to talk about is just bulk renaming maybe something like a description or, or some other type of variable. It doesn't have to be the description, but this is the example I'm going to use. Let's say we wanted all of these descriptions uh, to kind of match up with one another. Again, you can do that kind of stuff from a right click. So I can right click them, say I want to do a description update, type it in. I'm just going to name this example. And it's going to rename all of those files to where they all have this example description. So I mean, this is, this is just a huge time saver if you're thinking about doing this <laughs> in, a, in a manual type of process. One other that I think I'm going to show here is going to be the ability to, to sort of automate the copying of these files to an external location. So I already showed you guys what Web2. And I mean, that's going to take care of your, your external access, really, for the most part. But in some situations, I don't know, for whatever reason, so I've, I've worked with some companies that have wanted to offload some files to either a network drive or a OneDrive or a SharePoint or whatever. And you can do that with dispatch. So you can, in, in this case, I'm going to right click and say that I'm going to send this to, to OneDrive, I guess, is what I'll call it. Let's just call it OneDrive for now. It's going to run its processes in the background. We'll give it a second to finish up. And then I'm going to flip into this little external location. And you can see that it's maintaining the folder structure for me. So this is the folder structure where, from which I would have got these files from. So it came in, and it just did an exact copy. This could be a, a network location. This could be a OneDrive, a SharePoint. Uh, you name it. But one of the other things I, I think is really cool about this is that you can also do a git from this location. Okay, so you could you could send this out to, to wherever, have some people make a modification of it. And then what you could do is you could say that you want to get these files and send them to PDM. So go to that network location or that SharePoint or whatever local or network type of folder you have. And you could say, hey, I want to go grab these and send them back into PDM. And this is running the processes in the background. That's what those windows that are flashing up uh, is, is doing right now. So you might think, well, how do, I keep, how do I keep up to date with what's what? Well, one of the things you can build into the dispatch is whether or not these are offloaded into the external location. So you can see that this little symbol that I'm pinging with my cursor say, states that these have been offloaded says yes, and then the upload date it gives me the actual upload date of when I push those out. And then this is letting me know when I did the PDM refresh. So when was the last time that you refreshed from that you know, external location? If you maybe have somebody else who's working on them that's external to the company. Uh, so you can do this kind of stuff. And you can see just to showcase one of those other files that I did not send, uh, these flags and those date pieces of information would not be there uh, if, I, if I had not ran the dispatch on them. So this is just a way that you can kind of extend that collaboration. This is, this is really niche, by the way, guys. I'm not saying everybody needs this capability. But for the people that do need it, it's a pretty big, it's a pretty big help. All right. What we're going to look at here in a second is going to be some smart parts our smart part numbering system is, I guess, what I'll call it. And we're going to kind of talk about like just templates and some of the, some of the automated types of techniques and, and functions that you can use with them. So the first thing I'm going to do is just showcase a real simple type of smart part numbering system. OK, so I'm going to right click. We can go to New. And then I want to make this little part dash smart number. What's going to happen is you can customize this card to whatever type of numbering system you'd like. So you can have your product line shown here. And, and I'm, I'm kind of leaning on some of the previous products that I've designed. 
So that's what these things uh, right here in this drop list are going to show. But let's just say I want to make a hydro tester part number. So I can select that. And what I'm doing, maybe the hydro tester product number is 220. Okay? Maybe the pipe cleaning machine one is 107. You can customize these lists and make them to where they're aliased, to where whenever I select the, the hydrostatic tester, it's going to select the 220 number and drop it in there for me. I don't have to rely on my engineers or designers to remember that. And then I can select from whatever kind of drop list I have for the different part types, whether it's an assembly, buyout, you know, torch cut. Let's just say we're making a torch cut part here. Uh, and that torch cut part has maybe a particular, uh, a particular code that's associated with it. So we're just putting in two pieces of data and then clicking OK. And then you'll see the number that it's giving me is going to be this 220-200. So those are the product codes that I'm pulling in, 220 being like the hydro tester product line that I was talking about. And then the 200, meaning the, uh, the DXF or the torch cut type of, of part, and you can see how you can link these here to your, your different uh, data card variables. And then finally, the last numbering system at the tail end, this 004, is just a sequential counter. This is just going to count and, and sequentially grow as needed. You can go ahead and create your file and run with it from there. I don't really know, I don't really think we have time to dive into the specifics into how this is done. Uh, with alias lists and templates and things of that sort. But this is more of an awareness builder. So I wanted folks to be aware of, you know, the ability to, to automate that numbering type of creation. All right. The next high-speed template that I want to showcase is one that's kind of near and dear to me because I actually use this on a, a very regular basis um, whenever I'm doing training classes. So whenever we do training, we have to generate user certificates of completion for any of the classes that we teach. So the last class that I taught, this uh, Administering SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional, we have a naming scheme that we need to, to use. So we, we end up plugging in like the, the date with the year first and the month and the date. And then we have whether the class was taught online or what location of ours it was taught in, and then the name of the class. So that's like the standard that we follow. And then from within here, we put the user's name and then a sequential type of code that will be placed in on the, uh, on the back side. So the date uh, that the class was finalized. So all of this is pretty time consuming whenever you have to go in and do this for every single person uh, individually. All right? So what we've done, or what I've done anyways, is created a file template that will do the work for me. So I can just right click, go to New. MLC, and then I can say either a training certificate or a multi-training certificate. So I have one set up, the multi-training certificate. I can jam in like up to eight different attendee names if I want. I'm just going to do one for now. So I'm just going to go to the MLC training certificate and just do the original that just has one. So this, uh, this uh, particular student, you know, we can jam in their name, uh, place whatever class we would like to put in. Pop in the date. I'm just going to pick a, some random numbers here. And then put in a location. And you'll see that what's going to happen is that a new folder is going to be created. And then a Word document is going to also be created. And the cool thing that's happening in the background is the information that I plugged into that data card, that template card, is getting copied to that Word document. And then PDM is taking care of the PDF of, of pushing this Word document to a PDF. So it's going to automatically create that PDF for me. And then I don't have to worry about coming in and updating all of these every, for every single uh, certificate that I want to make. So this is a pretty nice time saver that we have available. And this can be, of course, customized to suit whatever application you have. Uh, that you would like to automate. All right, this next little portion that I want to cover is going to be ECNs or ECOs. For the, for the sake of simplicity here, I'm going to use those two terms interchangeably. Okay? Don't, don't try to gig me on the difference between ECN and ECO. I'm using them interchangeably uh, at the moment. 
So let's say, let's get a little bit of, of context here. Let's say that we've got our, our 4240 spreader, this little hydraulic spreader, and this is already an approved type of assembly. And what we want to do is we want to make a change. Maybe we've had like a failure in the field. Hopefully it's not something that uh, significant. You know, hopefully you've identified this by using uh, and, and proved it out virtually using uh, simulation and, and thoroughly vetted all of this. But let's just say we had a failure just for storytelling here. And we want to come back in and do a redesign and we want to thicken up the arm of that spreader and we want to replace one of those pins. Okay, that's just the, the storytelling part of this. So maybe I'm a, a manager or I'm somebody in quality control and I want to make an ECO, an engineering change order. Again, I'm using ECN, ECO kind of interchangeably. Again, don't gig me on it. So I'm going to right click, go to new, and when I can templatize the ECO creation process. So I'm just going to say create ECO. It can give it, uh, the system can give it a sequential number. So I don't have to worry about the naming or having duplicates or anything like that. I can jam in whatever description I want, you know, 4240 spreader. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to copy some of this information over uh, just to spare you guys the agony of watching me type. So these keywords, these can be searchable if you wanted to, to plug in any type of, of keywords. Uh, and then, of course, we could also put in a detailed description if we wanted. So all of this information can be captured right up front during the creation of the actual document. You know, we can say whether or not we want to scrap existing inventory, whether or not we want to use inventory. Again, this, this is very customizable types of stuff here. And I'll just go ahead and open up the file. And PBM Pro is like super well integrated with Explorer and Microsoft products, so we can actually do all of our PDM stuff directly from, uh, from Microsoft Word. But you can see how the information is getting pushed into uh, these fields. So like the information I plugged in whenever I was generating the document, all of that gets uh, placed in. And I could, I could put my information in here as far as like what the part numbers that it's affecting. Um, I'm not going to do that right now just because it's going to be really boring to watch that. So I'm just going to check it in. And you can have your own workflows set up with, for these you know, ECOs uh, to where they're, they're a different type of workflow from your, your CAD data. So here I'm going to showcase that I can assign this ECO. So I'm just going to push this to like one of my underlings. I'm, I'm logged in as a manager right now. So <laughs> I'm going to push this to one of, the, one of my underlings over here to do the actual grunt work. Uh, so I can say something like ECO assigned. And then I can make a notification comment like, hey, Jared, uh, do this work and let me know when you're done. Again, PDM Professional, a lot of you probably already know this. You can link it to your uh, emails. So you can have that notification. If I tick that box, that can email the individual to where they know for a fact that they have to work on this. They can't play dumb. So I'm going to say <laughs> change state and, uh, and run this through. So now this ECO has been assigned. All right. Let's say uh, I'm a manager, right? I'll, I'll kind of showcase one more thing. Let's say I'm a manager or maybe somebody from quality or maybe operations, and I want to see some of the ECOs that are in process. You can actually save a favorite type of search that will pull up all of the in-process ECOs. So this could be done as kind of like a little report that you want to check maybe every morning just to see what the heck's going on, and what kind of changes are coming your way. So you can see all of this um, you know, directly inside of your, your PDM. So I want to showcase a couple more things here. Uh, let's say that I'm the actual person that's making the changes to this, uh, to this assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab the assemblies that I want to make a change to. I'm going to say a change state and like request a change. I'm only going to change the files that I need, so like the top-level assembly and the ARM itself. You know, you can even say per ECO 0006 if you wanted to. But the cool thing that I want to showcase here is the capability to copy these files and then paste them as a reference into the ECO. So I'm going to paste this stuff as a reference and then check this 
into the vault again. And the cool thing that's going on, let's just imagine that I did the changes and did the work already. But the cool thing that you can do now is if you can go to your contains tab of the ECO and you can see the files that were affected. And I just think this is super useful stuff to be able to have that level of integration where you can see, okay, I can go to my assembly and see the ECOs, the list of ECOs and changes, you know, and document numbers that, that needed to... Uh, that needed to be made to, to change these files over the course of time. So this is really, really well integrated. <laughs> I just think it's so cool and, and well traceable. The other really thing that I really like about this is that you can even run your approval and approve all of this in the same motion if you set it up that way. So I can right click my ECO, go to change state, and then submit the change for approval. And notice what's coming in. I'm picking up on these, uh, the assembly as well as the ARM file. Right? I can type in whatever approval comments or notifications that I want, run through, and then I can even do the final approval this way as well and say the change is approved. And that's going to approve the ECO as well as the files themselves. Again, if you set it up like that, if you're comfortable and that's your process. And we'll go ahead and approve these. So now my ECO is complete. And I've got a link between the ECO document and any of the files that were affected by it. And the other cool thing that's going on here is my ECO is getting updated automatically. I can see who actually approved this and the approval date. And that's, you know, all getting captured here pretty readily. So hopefully everybody enjoyed seeing this and... If you're curious about, well, okay, this is cool and all, but what can it actually do for me and for my company? What kind of outcomes and, and benefits? What kind of goals can it help me achieve? And I think one of them right off the bat, this stuff that I showed, the Web 2, the, the dispatch, the smart part numbering, the ECNs, uh, they can help you improve your collaboration, hands down. I mean, Web 2, being able to access that data and immediately see... Um, you know, what you're working on and, and stay in the loop even when you're abroad. I think that's, that's a no-brainer. That's going to help you improve your collaboration. Uh, it's going to help you stay better organized. Think about the smart part numbering that we looked at. Uh, think about maybe the ECNs and being able to tell which files were affected by which ECN and having that level of integration right there for you when you need it. And then finally, I think you know, standards, following standards and, and compliance, uh, whether it's ISO 9001 or, or API types of standards or USDA, uh, et cetera. There's a huge number of, of standards that companies need to follow depending on their industry. And having this level of integration with their ECNs or ECOs, uh, that can help you achieve that type of compliance. So that's just a, a high level, kind of some of the stuff that this can help you help you reach. But I hope everyone enjoyed the webinar and just you know, got a chance to see some of the cool stuff that PDM Pro can do with some more advanced types of implementations. Again, we can help you get all of this set up. We can show you how that's done and help you bring it live so that it can best benefit your company. So I'm just curious if anybody has you know, some takeaways here or, or has some existing challenges that some of these tools can help you solve and that MLC and help you solve. We're here to help. Again, thank you all so much for attending.